One day walk on water, Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you Side to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. senior here at Auburn Adventist Academy and that means I'm in 12th grade for anyone who's not sure and um, I wish we could see you for real in person and live but unfortunately with the pandemic and everything we're gonna have to just meet through a video so that's okay at least we have technology that will work and so we can do this kind of thing and um, <laughs> I was asked to share something important to me um, or like a story or something like that that we can encourage you and recently I've been reading about Elisha and all the things that he did because um, he would perform miracles for God and stuff like that and God really worked through him and so I thought oh I should share an Elisha story with you and so I think my favorite Elisha story maybe like one of my favorites in the entire Bible is about um, how God is always there for us and he's always taking care of us even if we don't really see him. So, um, so a long time ago, back in Bible times, there was this king called the King of Aram and he wanted to go to war against Israel, which was Elisha's people. And um, he, like whenever he plotted to go to war with them, there was an issue because Elisha would always find out from God where he was going, where the king of Aram was going, and um, he would like, he'd go tell the king of Israel or some other people that are high up and um, trying to plan like their plan for war or whatever. Um, he would tell them where the king of Aram was going, so it wasn't really working for the king of Aram. And the king of Aram told his advisors and his officers like, which of you is telling the king of Israel and all of his people um, where we're going and how we're fighting and stuff. And they were like, oh, we're not doing that. Um, that's Elisha. Elisha's getting this information from God and he's co going to the king of Israel and telling him. And the king of Aram was like, oh no, that's not good. That means we have to go get rid of Elisha before we can fight the Israelites. And so he sent a whole bunch of people, like this whole army, over to this place in Israel called Dotham and um, that's where Elisha and his servant were staying and he said you need to either like kill them or take them as prisoners of war or something like that because we got to get rid of them and the, we don't want them telling 
the king of Israel what's going on. And so they went and they took them by surprise at night, kind of, because they want to be surprising. <laughs> and um, then in the morning, Elisha's servant went outside and he saw all of these chariots and all of these people that weren't from his country. And he said to Elisha, oh no, what's happening? Like, this isn't good. We need help and we need, I don't know, we, I don't know what to do. And Elisha was like, oh, it's all right. And Elisha was totally calm. And so he prayed. And that's one more thing I really admire about Elisha is that he um, prayed to God before he stressed about everything. And um, he said, God, please open my servant's eyes so that he can see um, what you're doing and that he can see that you're here. And so God opened the servant's eyes and he saw all these chariots of fire and all these horses and they were God's chariots of fire because God was helping to protect Elisha and his servant and he was there with them even if they couldn't really see him sometimes. And then Elisha prayed again and he said, also God, could you please make this army blind so they can't hurt us. And God made the army blind. And then Elisha took the army to the king of Israel. And he, the king of Israel was like, uh, why are you bringing these people to me? I think we should kill them or something. And Elisha was like, no, why should we kill them? We don't want to kill them. And um, he said, instead, I want you to feed them a good meal and give them a good night's of rest and treat them really nicely and then send them home. And so Elisha, like, he asked God, can you please uh, make these this army not blind anymore so that they can see? And then the king of Israel um, did what Elisha asked and he fed them and he took care of them and then he sent him, them home. And you know what? The king of Aram never sent an army to Israel again to fight because they'd been treated with such kindness. And I think that's a really good thing because kindness is really important. Even if someone is being rude to us or someone is being mean, or if we don't agree with someone, we still need to be kind to them because that's what God has asked us to do. And um, also God makes being kind easier when we allow him to put his love in our hearts and we ask him into our hearts. And then other thing is that sometimes we don't see what God sees. So like, you know, Elisha and his servant couldn't really see the chariots of fire and um, and God's how God was protecting them until they asked God, can you please open our eyes? And then they saw. And a lot of times God is fighting for us, even in like battles like the pandemic or something, he's with us even if we don't really see him. And you can also see him in small things like your family or your teachers. And maybe it's not like a huge thing like chariots of fire or anything, but it might just be in small ways. So I want to remind you that God is always with you and God is always faithful and God will carry us through the pandemic and anything else that we are having an issue with. And um, please remember that Jesus loves you a lot and he died for you. And um, with that, <laughs> I think I'm gonna close off. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and an awesome Christmas. And I will be praying for all of your schools and that you can come back after Christmas and um, hang out with friends and that this pandemic will be better. So, bye! Hi kids! So I hope you have enjoyed our visit with Katie Conrad and Ashley Campos. They're both two very special seniors. So I'm glad you had a chance to hear from them today. And I am coming to you this morning from the girls' dorm. I wanted you to see how beautifully decorated it was for Christmas. So take a little look here. Uh, you can see all the lights and the garland and the wreaths and the fireplace is burning, and the girls have just had a really cozy time here um, in preparation for uh, the season before they go on break. So uh, I know they're very appreciative of the Deeds for putting forth that wonderful effort for them. So I just want to finish by saying I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, greetings to your families, 
and um, we'll see you again in the new year. So we'll close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, what a beautiful gift you gave us in your son um, that came as a baby and uh, most of all is our savior and uh, who died and we cannot wait till he comes back and, and we all get to go home and live with you um, for, throughout eternity. And, uh, but we will, um, in the meantime, we will remain close to you. We will trust in you. And we thank you for the beauty uh, that you bring to us through friendships, through our family, and that um, the special things that come at Christmas. And I just pray a special blessing over each one of these folks that are listening today. I pray that you will help our um, time with them in the coming year, that we can uh, get to know each other even better. And I just ask your blessing over all of that. Um, and a Merry Christmas to, to all of our families and a special blessing from you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.